Good morning, and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where every week we talk about the bills, issues, and happenings going on at the State Capitol. The topic this morning is sexual harassment. Last week was a difficult one for the House. As part of a settlement agreement with the State Hawaii State Ethics Commission related to complaints of sexual harassment, Speaker Emeritus Joseph M. Suki admitted to inappropriate, unwelcome, and unwanted conduct directed toward women while serving as the Speaker of the House. Representative Suki also issued a public apology, announced his resignation from his office, effective this Friday, March 30th, agreed to a payment of $5,000 administrative penalty, and agreed not to seek or accept public office for a period of two years. Joining us today to talk about reactions to this announcement, resolution of the sexual harassment claims against Speaker Emeritus Suki, and how the community can move forward in addressing the issues of workplace harassment are representatives Della Albalotti, House Majority Leader, and Lauren Matsumoto, House Minority Whip, who also serve as the co-conveners of the Hawaii Women's Legislative Caucus. Representative Bilotti, let's start with reactions to Speaker Suki's announcement. Thank you, James, for this opportunity to talk about workplace harassment at the Capitol. Like the broader community, Reactions to the announcement were mixed, but I think a common thread through everyone's reaction is a recognition that workplace culture here at the Capitol and at all levels of government and across all sectors has to change and is changing to ensure a workplace free of harassment where people can confidentially report complaints that will be fairly and thoroughly investigated, resolved and adjudicated with appropriate corrective measures and consequences to ensure that the workplace continues to be safe. Mm -hmm. Speaker Psyche released a statement last week that emphasized that the House takes a zero tolerance approach to workplace harassment, no matter the power or influence of the accused. Speaker, also, Speaker Psyche also explained that the House has already increased its training for House members and staff. And I fully expect that we will continue to look at ways to improve training. Speaker Psyche also committed to conducting a comprehensive review of the House workplace policies, and the Women's Legislative Caucus shortly thereafter made a public commitment to work with both House and Senate leadership teams to improve our internal policies and procedures. In my view, this will minimally mean assessing reporting procedures, how investigations are handled, and who conducts these investigations, how matters are resolved, and what are the appropriate avenues for further adjudication. James, these are all important questions and the community at large has to grapple with, not just us. As former Human Services Director uh, Rachel Wong stated last week, the resolutions of these complaints and others' complaints really opens up an opportunity uh, a space in our community for focus on some real issues at hands. The conversations that we're having here in this community are actually happening um, throughout the nation at large. I see. Um, harassment in the workplace is an issue sweeping the nation, as we have seen with the Me Too movement, how it takes root with people sharing their stories of workplace harassment. Are there any takeaway lessons from other states that we should know about? There is a lot of lessons from other states Many members of our Women's Legislative Caucus are part of Women in Government, which is a national, nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of women state legislators across the country. And in January, they issued a survey to the approximately 1,800 women state legislators in our nation to ask them about sexual harassment. And I wanted to just read the three questions that were asked. One, does your state currently have provisions to address sexual harassment? Two, who is covered by your state's provisions? Three, what measures, if any, are you or your state considering to address sexual harassment and was, what is it intended to do? And this was an extremely important survey. Hmm. Are there any best practice issues or measures being considered by states in response to sexual harassment? So what's great is what came out of the survey is women in government also went across the country and spoke with individual women um, legislators to get their takeaways. Um, they, we also had several board meetings on this issue and they've come away with eight suggestions to help remedy this problem. Um, the first is professional standards of conduct as a whole. Mm -hmm. Employers really need to make sure that they're providing uh, risk-free 
establishment so people are able to have a great place of work. Um, second, including all voices in the discussion. So in addition to legislators, making sure advocates are at the table when making decisions on these policies, maybe lobbyists, everybody who's involved in the capital setting, that their voices are at the table. Mm -hmm. Third, ensure due process for alleged abusers in order for the accused to not be tried by the media due, due to these allegations. Four, is require sexual harassment training for all staff, which is something we currently do but maybe looking, do we extend that training to lobbyists or other people who work at the Capitol? Female lobbyists have emerged as a very vulnerable population um, in Congress, but also in many state legislatures, because unlike government employees, there's often not a clear direction as to who they report to if there is a problem. Um, fifth, going along those lines, making sure that there's very clear reporting mechanisms. So everybody knows if there is an issue, who they need to go to. And then also making sure there's accountability and transparency in everything that we do. And then looking at statutes of limitations. Should there be one? And if so, how long should that be? And finally, an external investigation process. Seeing if we need a third party to handle some of these investigations so people feel like they have really have had the best opportunity to have their voice be heard. Well, sounds like some in-depth questions going on there. Mm -hmm. Well, for both of you, any thoughts of, of how the state and how the House now moves forward? Rep, Rep. Matsumoto. Yeah, this is something that we really need to take the time to invest in. It's something that requires a lot of deliberation, and it's not something that we're going to solve overnight. And I think we all realize that because whatever we put into place, we want to make sure that it is the best answer to solve this issue and that we have all stakeholders at the table that all voices are heard, so we can make sure that we restore the faith in the people that we represent. In the last minute, what, what do you think? What, what? I, I wanna echo what my colleague has said. If we want real, meaningful change, we need to be deliberate, thoughtful, and inclusive in our next steps. You know, statements are not gonna be enough. We have to really um, uh, embrace this cultural change that we're in. We have to uh, ensure that examinations and reviews are thorough. And you know what? These examination and reviews cannot just happen here at the Capitol. We really need all employers to be looking at their policies and procedures. Um, they have to be asking themselves, are they providing meaningful training? Are they ensuring that employees have a safe place to uh, report in a timely manner? Are um, employers engaging in thorough and, uh, and objective investigation? We have to answer all of these questions and do it in a thoughtful manner. Yes, this is something we, we need to look at closely and, and we will as we move forward. Thank you for joining us here today and see you next week. Mm -hmm.